Hello friends, let's begin the journey to understand psychology with me, Dr. Sheetal Devlalkar. We know that psychology is the scientific study of the human mind and its functions, especially those affecting behavior. Friends, there are different branches of psychology. Some of them like behavioral, cognitive, developmental, social, biological and educational. From this, educational psychology is important for a teacher in which he will get knowledge regarding educational process, which is the study of how humans learn and retain knowledge primarily in educational settings like classrooms. This includes emotional, social and cognitive learning processes. In this video, today we discuss the principles of growth and development. Principle means a fundamental, primary or general law of truth from which others are derived. When we see the principles of growth and development, some psychologists focused on specific 8 principles or 10 or 16. But in this video, we just discuss on some of them. The first principle of development is Saflock Order. This principle describes the direction of growth and development. The head region starts growth at first, following by which other organs starts developing. The child gains control of the head first, then the arms and then the legs. Infants develop control of the head and face movements at first two months. In next few months, they are able to lift themselves up by using their arms. Next gain control over leg and able to crawl, stand, walk, run, jump, climb day by day. The second principle is proximodistal. The directional sequence of development during both prenatal and postnatal stages may either be from head to foot or from the central axis to the extremities of the body. The spinal cord develops before outer parts of the body. The child's arms develops before the hands. The hands and feet develops before the fingers and toes. Fingers and toe muscles are the last to develop in physical development. The third principle is growth and development is a continuous process. It is from conception to death. In the early years of life, development consists of changes that lead the child to maturity not only of body size and functioning but also of behavior. Even after maturity has been attained, development does not end. Changes continue which lead to the period of life known as old age. These changes continue until death ends the life cycle. The next principle is growth and development is orderly or sequential process. Students, you all know that infants stand before they walk, draw circles before they make squares. It shows that every species, whether animal or human, follows a pattern of development peculiar to it. This pattern, in general, is the same for all individuals. All children follow a development pattern with one stage leading to the next. The fifth principle is growth and development are influenced by environmental and genetic factor. Friends, growth and development is a joint product of both heredity and environment. The next one is growth and development is predictable. With the help of the rate of growth and development of a child, it is possible for us to predict the range within which his mature development is going to fall. 
The seventh one is development proceeds from simple to complex. Children at first are able to hold the big things by using both arms. In the next part, able to hold things in a single hand. Then only able to pick small objects like peas, cereals, etc. The next principle of growth and development is principle of individual difference. Individuals differ in the rate of growth and development. The tempo of development is not even. Boys and girls have different development rates. Each part of the body has its own particular rate of growth. Development does not occur at an even pace. The ninth principle is growth and development are proceeds from general to specific. In all areas of development, general activities always precede specific activity. For example, infants wave their arms randomly. They can make such specific responses as reaching out for an object near them. But in childhood, he uses his arms properly for dancing. And the last one is, there is a constant interaction between all factors of development. It means development in one area is highly related to development in other area. For example, a child who has a good health can be active socially and intellectually. So friends, in this way today we discuss principles of growth and development. Friends, these are some references which are used for this content. You read some more to know this in depth. Hope. You found this video informative and audible. Thank you so much for watching the video.